If you're actually preparing for parliamentary interviews but have no offers by now, you must make the following four mistakes. I guarantee you that's one of the reasons kill your job offer that could cost you $800,000 per year of mistakes. And the mistakes happen between entry-level product manager that makes $100,000 per year all the way up to very senior product manager, even directors that making over $800,000 per year. In this video, I'm gonna cover the top four most asked interview questions and most typical mistakes when you go to product manager interviews. Stay until the end of the video where I share with you guys the quality of those answers that differentiate entry-level PMs all the way to senior-level PMs. It's all lies on how we answer those specific questions. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people to land their dream PM job offer in fan companies, a unicorn startup, and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If interested in product management course, go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. In this channel, we talk about free product management training and tech trends. Like and subscribe, watch the new video every Tuesday. The number of mistakes people make in those interviews is, don't know talk about your salary. In those interviews, even in the first round interviews, recruiters will likely to ask you this question. Number one, what's your salary expectation? Number two, how much you're getting paid right now? If your answer is way too high above the budget, they will reject you immediately just based on the first round interview. Of course, you cannot give a too low number because we're getting low bought offer towards the end or people feel like maybe you're not a confident candidate only want to ask $50,000 per year as a product manager so it's very fine balance in terms of the salary range you should give other people I highly recommend during this primary recruiting season everyone just give a range of salary so that you are safe in terms of all their budget is falling in between your range. Of course, you're a very aggressive negotiator. You can only give them a very high number upfront and then negotiate later on with them. But I do not recommend unless you know exactly how much they are getting paid to the current employees right now. So therefore, a range is a safer choice. On top of that, your range should also be reasonable and related to the specific level and specific companies. Let me give you a specific example. For example, in Amazon if you already have some kind of work experience but you can transition into product management or you're already product manager for one or two years experience and you jump to Amazon you can easily get paid $300,000 per year if you know how to negotiate your salary correctly and if you're someone who can land a product manager job in Waymo it's extremely likely they're gonna pay you above $300,000 per year even if the job description only say that I, we only need some two years job experience. However, you are competing with someone from Google and other places working for Waymo. So therefore Waymo is paying people at 98 percentile in the job market. This is based on the internal employee working for Waymo told me this. Again, paid 98 percentile salary range within the industry. So as long as you can get in, they must pay you even higher than Google because they hired Google product manager to work for Waymo. So you are getting paid at least $300,000 per year if you can join this type of companies. We also have people join a Snowflake competitor and he's getting paid over $440,000 per year. And he does not have product management experience, but he had more AI ML experience. He had, we were able to package his past experience to demonstrate he's already have transfer skills to be AI product manager. And that's why AI is such a hot domain and that company snowflake competitor was able to pay him over four hundred thousand dollars per year in terms of total compensation of course if you join a startup and it likely to pay you about two hundred thousand dollars per year if you have some kind of work experience if entry level depends on east coast or west coast companies the salary is also different could be around one hundred thousand dollars per year for entry level so the range is really really big so therefore i recommend all of you guys to understand the specific company specific location specific title and industry to give the correct range and in this video i talk about my specific salary from 2009 all the way to 2013 how much i get paid in different type of roles different type of companies you can use it as a reference to decide what type of salary range you should ask in your job interviews the second biggest mistake for people to make in the job interview is not asking clarifying questions correctly for example in the product manager interview it's likely they're going to give you a case product design case the case question could be design a kitchen or design a dating app could also be design an uber app for blind people 
All those are typical product design interview questions for all the way to fan level to startups. They will ask you those kind of questions all day long. But the number one biggest mistake that candidate walk into those interviews always ask the wrong clarifying questions. For example, if I ask you to design a kitchen, I literally had heard candidate said, design kitchen for who? Tell me. It's for what type of kitchen? You mean commercial kitchen or home kitchen? So tell me what type of kitchen you want me to design and then I can design for you. This is a wrong clarifying questions up front because you basically ask the interviewer help you to decide the customer segmentation and the prioritization of customer segmentations as well. So it's very likely you're gonna fail this interview just based on the wrong clearing questions you ask. People may also ask the wrong question regarding the goal of the company. For example, this is a real Google interview questions, design an app for museum. If you ask this clearing questions upfront saying that, why Google want to design an app for a museum? Well, this will be a bad clearing questions to ask upfront was because you should understand Google's mission and you should also try to guess why we are solving this problem and you're trying to think through your perspective thinking about what the purpose of designing an app for a museum why google is interesting on this mission you should connect with the mission of google directly and then go out to give a specific answers and then make some assumptions towards the end you can ask is this assumption correct based on my understanding of why we design an app for a museum for google there are 10 different kind of clarifying questions up front the beginning of any case interviews you should go to this website and download those cheat sheets about 10 different kind of clarifying questions and use it for inspiration to understand what type of interview questions you ask what kind of clarifying questions and match them with the type of cases you have and also based on type of levels you have i'm going to link it in the description of this video so you can download right there the third mistake is not knowing how to talk about why you want to become a product manager this is most asked interview questions but lots of times people made a mistake by saying oh I want to transition into PM because I really love product management, da, da, da. they use the wrong keyword, which is transition into PM. The main reason is that 91% product managers are transition into product management. You don't need to highlight the fact that you made a transition. In fact, you should tell them that your transferable skills you have. You should already tell them that I have done related product management functions in the past and I know how to write product requirements. I know customer personas through different kind of product management training. I actually have hands-on experience talking to customers to conduct voice of customer interviews to understand the pain point. So you should never talk about your transition into product management. Instead, talk about your transferable skills. Whenever you say the keyword transition, people always feel like, ah, oh, I need to hire someone else with more experience. That is going to kill your job opportunities. Another important reminder, the best way to really repackage a past experience regarding transferable skills is actually learn product management upfront because you cannot fake it to say, I have this experience, but you never have done that and never learn it. So it's really bad to show up in the interview that way. So therefore, I highly encourage everyone to take any product management classes and also gain some hands-on experience by building a product portfolio so that you can show them you actually done that before. That's the best way to transition into product management with full confidence. And there's so many different classes you can choose outside on the market and actually my best investment, guess what? It's those $300 English pronunciation class. I had a live class, group coaching classes, someone who is a coach provides specific advice to me regarding, hey, how would you be able to pronounce your English much better? It's from a nonprofit called Boston Adult Education Center. It's the best investment of $300 I can ever make in my life. And I also invest $8,000 in public speaking skills, $22,000 in learning different kind of product management skills and hands-on experience. And all of those is going to give you a big payback as well. So therefore, I encourage everyone to take any kind of classes out there to really gain skills so that you don't need to talk about your transition. Actually, you master those skills before you even become a product manager. And 91% of people out there, they transition into product management. You can do it as well. If you like the tips I provide so far, make sure to like this video and let's see strategy number four. Number four is the most made mistake even by senior product managers out there. It's not knowing how to talk about the scope of your project and scope of work and demonstrate your scope of thinking. There are two different ways to demonstrate the scope of thinking. One is through your scope of 
product design. The other one is through your scope of managing past complex project. First of all, let me tell you why scope of thinking is the most important thing to qualify you for senior PM position and also get paid significantly more. Was well, because the company expects someone who is able to manage a very complex situation, uh, cross-functional stakeholders as a product manager. This is a must-have skill as a lead without authority. If you are a product manager, if I ask you this question, for example, tell me a time we had to manage complex situation where you had to deal with multiple stakeholders who has a complex Competing needs. These are typical interviewing questions, but I have so many senior product managers with over 10 years experience, they know how to answer this question correctly because they just only talk about the complexity within the project, but they forgot to talk about the scope of the work. For example, if I answer the question at the very beginning of the introduction in the first two sentences, I will talk about when I launched the first 5G edge computing product in the world, I collaborated with big stakeholders such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Verizon. Those have very complex relationship between all three different kinds of stakeholders. And I am the key product manager who is in the middle and leverage the relationship, align vision among all of them. So in one sentence, I described how big the scope is, which is the first 5G edge computing product in the world, and also talk about key big stakeholders with big names out there. People can immediately understand, wow, this is more than the normal product. This is a very huge product and scope she have worked on. So immediate catch the attention so that they can continue listen to the next step. Another way to show the big scope of thinking is show the big side of marketplaces you design. For example, if you design a travel app for Facebook, it's likely most people only talk about well people traveling, different kind of travelers, but you should talk about different marketplaces such as travelers, service providers, and also third party agencies. If you design Uber Eats, you should not only talk about people who order food through the Uber Eats app. You should talk about the drivers, the foodies, and the restaurants. Because all three parties are three different marketplaces that they can talk about how they work together to make the entire ecosystem available and stable. So therefore, it's very critical to demonstrate your big scope thinking using the right framework. So how to apply the two-sided marketplace framework correctly, I broke it down in this video where I talk about specific examples, how you use the framework to have a huge scope of thinking that qualify you for $300,000 job and for even more senior director's position over there. You should check out this video right here and also make sure to download the top 10 clean frame questions for your PM interviews. I'm gonna see you in my next video right here. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMAccelerator.io. See you next time.